Hello, uh, and it's uh, it's great to be with you again uh, um, in January 2021 to continue our reading of uh, Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind by Suzuki Roshi. Uh, this reading is going on for five years, five, six years now, uh, in between all the other things that uh, I do as a Zen teacher and everything else with my life. So maybe I'll finish it this year, 2021. So maybe it only took half a decade <laughs> or more to get through our reading circle of Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. I'm taking it up today because uh, Joanne Wilde from Oregon, Joanne Ponce, uh, sent me an email over uh, Christmas to say uh, that she appreciates uh, these these videos about Suzuki Roshi's work and his teachings. So it encouraged me to, uh, to continue and to try and maybe finish these talks uh, based on the great teachings of Suzuki Roshi. So thank you for that, Joanne, and Happy New Year to you. Um, we're looking now at the last section of Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. Our understanding of Buddhism is not just an intellectual understanding. True understanding is actual practice itself. And this is right understanding, the third and final part of this book. Traditional Zen spirit, if you are trying to attain enlightenment, you are creating and being driven by karma, and you are wasting your time on your black cushion, says Master Suzuki. So, uh, I suppose I've been teaching Zen in the role of a teacher for five, six years now, uh, since I received Dharma transmission from my teacher, Taigu in Paris in uh, 2014 and in those short number of years um, I've come across many Zen students and many come seeking enlightenment, they come to practice, they come to sit Zazen with our Sangha Zen Buddhism Ireland here in Dublin in Ireland and they, they're seeking enlightenment and really you know, I suppose they've read a lot about Satori and Kensho and great awakening experiences, and this is what they want to pursue, this is what they want to achieve. And really, Suzuki Roshi is teaching us the teaching of, of the Tagada Garba and the, the Buddha nature. Uh, if you are trying to attain enlightenment, you are creating and being driven by karma. <coughs> Excuse me, and you're wasting your time on the black cushion. The most important things in our practice are our physical posture and our way of breathing. We are not so concerned about a deep understanding of Buddhism. As a philosophy, Buddhism is a very deep, wide and firm system of thought. But Zen is not concerned about philosophical understanding. We emphasize practice. So, to follow the Buddha way in the Zen understanding, understanding, there we go again, in the Zen way, to follow the Buddha way, to follow the Zen way is to practice Zen, is to sit Zaza. And of course we do study and, and we read Sutra and we study Sutra and we study form and the tradition and everything else. But, and we have rituals, many rituals, uh, but the only core and essential thing is to sit zazen, is to sit zazen as a regular part of your life, preferably every day. So sitting zazen to practice zen is, is the point. So again, many students that I've met are looking for a philosophical understanding of zen. They're looking, particularly students of philosophy or students that have come through the Western tradition or the Western universities or any kind of Western education, or even Catholic priests and nuns who come to sit with us in Zen Buddhism Ireland, they're looking for the theology, or they're looking for the philosophy of Zen. And Suzuki Roshi is wisely telling us here that this is not the point, that it is the point of practice. So the point of living is, is living, not living your life, not thinking about life. Similarly with Zen. And in this chapter, Suzuki Roshi is... Is, is drawing a lot on the teachings of the first patriarch in China, Bodhidharma. There's a great uh, translation of the Zen teachings of Bodhidharma by Red Pine. Uh, in the Bloodstream Sermon, which is one of the 
foundational uh, texts uh, for, of the Zen or Chan tradition, drawing on the Avatam Saka Sutra as well, uh, this text, it says, but suppose I don't see my nature, can't I still attain enlightenment by in invoking Buddhas, reciting sutras, making offerings? Bodhidharma says, no, you can't. Why not? Says the student. Because if you attain anything at all, it's conditional, it's karmic. It's result, it results in retribution, it turns the wheel. And as long as you are subject to birth and death, you'll never attain enlightenment. So he says, a Buddha is free of karma, free of cause and effect. To say he attains anything at all is to slander a Buddha. So they're the words of, of Bodhidharma from, you know, well, he, you know, possibly the 5th century. Uh, he finally arrived in southern China around 475 uh, AD, as we, uh, or common era from, from India. So in this in this uh, chapter, uh, Suzuki Roshi is really drawing on Bodhidharma. Before Bodhidharma went to China, almost all the well-known stock words of Zen were in use. For, for instance, there was the term sudden enlightenment. Sudden enlightenment is not an adequate translation, but tentatively I will use the expression enlightenment comes all of a sudden to us. This is true enlightenment. But Bodhidharma... Before Bodhidharma, people thought that after long preparation, sudden enlightenment would come. Thus, Zen practice was a kind of training to gain enlightenment. Actually, many people today are practicing Zazen with this idea that they can practice to gain enlightenment. But this is not the traditional understanding of Zen. The understanding passed down from Buddha to our time is that when you start Zazen, there is enlightenment, even without any preparation. Whether you practice as or not, you have Buddha nature. Because you have it, there is enlightenment in your practice. The points we emphasize are not the stage we attain, but the strong confidence we have in our original nature and the sincerity of our practice. We should practice then with the same sincerity as Buddha. If originally we have Buddha nature, the reason we practice Zazen is that we must behave like Buddha. To transmit our way is to transmit our spirit from Buddha. So, we're not gaining anything in our practice of Zazen. In fact, maybe we're losing things. We're paring back to, to, to the ground of being, to the most simple truth of existence. This is, this is Zazen. And this is, is something that's with us all the time in any case, before our birth and after our death. It is beyond birth and death. And this truth, which is ineffable and not subject to being fitted into a philosophical formula or explanation, it is profoundly experiential. This truth uh, is what is manifest in the practice of Zen. So it's there, but only becomes manifest through practice. And this is, this is what uh, Master Dogen uh, teaches throughout his Shobogenzo uh, uh, in the, his, his great 13th century work um, about, um, particularly in the Genjo Koan, uh, one of the important parts of that work where he talks about um, how it's it's like the wind; it's always there, but it has to be fanned into being. It has to has to be made manifest through practice. And of course, Suzuki Roshi is drawing profoundly on the great founder of Soto Zen in Japan, Dogen, uh, in teaching here about uh, practice enlightenment. Uh, that the point is not what stage you're on, because all the stages make up the whole. Um, more important than any stage which you will attain is your sincerity, your right effort. Right effort must be based on a true understanding of our traditional practice. So here's the, here's the, uh, always the apparent contradiction in Zen that it's not about understanding, but we must understand. Uh, 
The Ford Bodhidharma, the study of Buddhism's teachings, resulted in a deep and lofty philosophy of Buddhism, and people tried to attain its high ideals. This is a mistake. Bodhidharma discovered that it was a mistake to create some lofty or deep idea, and then tried to attain it by the practice of Zazen. So, uh, I think uh, I hear lots of commotion downstairs, so uh, the piece of my ability to teach is about to end. <laughs> so, uh, let me just wrap up looking at the last lines of Suzuki Roshi today. Constantly, we should practice Zazen with strong confidence in our true nature, breaking the chain of karmic activity and finding our place in the world of actual practice. So, that's page 99, Traditional Zen Spirit. Next time we'll look at page 102, Transiency. So, the final part of uh, Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, reminding us of two things, of maybe two or three things. The core teachings here that Suzuki offers today is that we are not discovering or attaining something new in our practice. We are coming back home to the truth of our own Buddha nature. That it is not a philosophical formula, Zen. It is not contained by the limited boundaries of philosophy or understanding in a rational or conventional way. That it is rather experiential. And that any part of the path is itself the path. The goal is in each step and the point is to practice and to, to live this way rather than to talk about living this way. So really important teachings from Master Suzuki today. So Happy New Year, Happy 2021. Thank you Joanne for reminding me to return to this, to this task and maybe I'll finish it this year. Uh, five or six years after starting. So we'll see. Maybe not. Deep bows to you. Enjoy your practice. And thank you.